shoveled a foot of snow, but I knew what was ahead. The Edmonton Oilers, the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight from Rogers Place. As we get a look at our starting goaltenders, brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of the National Hockey League. Jack Campbell hasn't played as well lately, but his numbers on the season, spectacular. 8-9-1, same percentage as last four. Miko Koskinen's dropped three in a row, and just two and six, lifetime against Toronto. What a matchup we've got for you tonight. Austin Matthews on a heater, 11 goals in his last nine. And Connor McDavid currently tied for the league lead in scoring. And how about what Sportsnet got it for you tonight? We've got live Mike, William Nylander of the, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Tyson Berry, the Edmonton Oilers. They're mic'd up and we're set with Toronto controlling the opening faceoff and sending it in deep. Andre Kasha for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Edmonton a little banged up with no Zach Hyman. So some new fangled lines. McDavid will center Warren Fogle and yes, a pool Yarby. Nurse and Bouchard, the deep pairing to start your starting lineup. Brought to you by Scotiabank, believing there's a place for all Canadians in Canada's game. And it's worked in deep. Austin Matthews with the injury to Mitch Marner, playing with Michael Bunting and Andre Kasha. TJ Brody starting with Morgan Riley on defense, and Brody shot and deflected out of play by Boulier. Already some shoving in front of the net, and a real buzz in the building, Jack, as it always is when the Toronto Maple Leafs come to town. There's some blue jerseys in the crowd, and for the Oilers fans, they know it, they want to cheer. There's an atmosphere already built here, and the Edmonton Oilers know that coming into this game. For Connor McDavid, he said it. It's always special when you play the Leafs. You know it's going to be a buzz, and early on, it's had that bite to it. You saw Bunting right in front of Koskinen and trying to chip away at it. Darnell Nurse escorts him out of the blue paint. Off the draw, Nylander once again, mic'd up for you tonight. Flips a wrist shot wide, picked up by Dryson. He'll tie with McDavid atop the league scoring race, and he's drawn a penalty against John Tavares right off the hop. Kyler Yamamoto looking to contain. Extra man on, and it's Drysaddle swooping out of the corner. The extra man, of course, is Connor McDavid, and the Oilers back off. Duncan Keith is on the ice, playing with Cody Ceci. He has missed the last eight games. Heard something non-contact against Dallas. Yamamoto walks in. Nugent Hopkins kicks it back. Drysaddle a shot against Jack Campbell, had it blocked. He'll race back Mikheyev, making his season debut for the Toronto Maple Leafs, as he broke his thumb in the preseason finale, so he hasn't suited up at all this year. McDavid breaks in, poke checked away, and now Edmonton will be on the power play. Well, for Leon Dreisler, it's about moving the feet through the neutral zone. They want to attack with speed, and they want to play fast, and you're going to see Tavares dig in a little deep here and just take him down. And you know, for Dreisaitl, he feels that pressure, he keeps his feet moving, draws that penalty, and the first power play goes to Edmonton in this game. And it's a power play that as of late hasn't been as hot as it was at the start of the year, but this would be a big moment for a team that's been chasing a lot of games this year to get on the board first. In this five game losing streak, the Oilers have allowed the first goal all five times. Barry takes the middle of the ice, gives it up, Nugent Hopkins, Dreisaitl behind the net. Over to Connor McDavid, back to Barry. Edmonton power play not as effective recently, but then again, neither is Toronto's penalty kill. Nugent Hopkins tried to center. Leafs have given up seven power play goals over their last six games, all in the month of December where they're 3-2-1. and one. After an errant pass, Pugliarvi muscles his way down low. Again, no Zach Hyman, so it'll be Pugliarvi getting those top power play minutes. Nugent Hopkins gave it away, and Jake Muzzin, the 33-year-old, able to clear off the window, and Miko Koskinen will leave it for Barry, who spent the one year with the Leafs, and it was not a particularly happy one, even though he had a strong second half. He'll drop it off, Connor McDavid, racing through the middle, in on Riley, a shot, Campbell with the save, and the rebound cleared up the left-hand side, and out. Oh, what a drive by McDavid, and Morgan Riley, who's been on the receiving end of a few of those drives by McDavid down the ice, gives him a little tap afterwards. They have a couple words as McDavid goes off. Kyle Turris breaks in, re shot, and that clipped the crossbar and out of play. And Turris, who has not played a game since November the 24th, comes within an eyelash of giving Edmonton the early lead. Wicked Rister, here's the drive with McDavid, all four players around him. He goes through one-handed backhand. But remember these couple of goals that Connor McDavid's had against the Leafs. And this is why they 
know exactly what it's all about. This one around Morgan Riley, you know that one, and then last year in the bubble. Does a great job just to drive through. The moving bubble that was, and what a finish by 97. They've seen that very often. Pick play off the draw, Louis. Zach Cassian, two minutes for interference, and that will negate the remaining 43 seconds of the Edmonton power play. We'll skate four on four, and then Toronto will be on the man advantage for a buck 17. As you mentioned, right off the faceoff, you can see Cassian digging in right there. And good job by Morgan Riley. Kind of gets his hand up into the stick. Once it's there, you're going to go into that pressure, draws the call. Very similar to the Tavares penalty. Go into that pressure, draw the two. And as you mentioned, 43 seconds of four and four action. You know, we talked about the first goal, Louis, but as you know, in the four games on this homestand, Edmonton's been down two, let alone one. They've been down two nothing every game this homestand. No surprise, they're 0 four. Different game when you're chasing. No question about that. You extend yourself and you're opening yourself up to counterattacks when you're really trying to push it. Number one catch a team, gain a team. For Edmonton, they'd like to start playing with the lead a little more often. Dreisland wins the faceoff. Toronto, a premier faceoff club. Edmonton is 0-5 against the teams ahead of it in faceoff percentage this year. Here's a turnover, and the Leafs skating four on four will move up ice. Lilia Grin kicks it back. Kerfoot has a wide open muzzle, a shot, and that's controlled by Koskinen. Rebound scooped by Keith off to Cody CC and a dart ahead for dry subtle just miss McDavid racing over there and hacking it out Lilia Gray and that will bring us to a Toronto power play where the Leafs have been on a serious heater five consecutive multi power play goal games and that is only the third time in the history of this club that that's ever happened to 81 and 93 <laughs> to say it's on fire is an understatement. Here's Kasha. Crowd roaring tonight in support of both clubs. As it's more than speckled with Leafs Blue in Rogers' place tonight. Matthews to Nyland. Morgan Riley winds it up. Matthews, the combative chance going back and forth. One urging Toronto on, one urging the home team. Here's a centering pass off the mark intended for Tavares. Matthews flicks it down low for Kasha. Back to Matthews. 18 on the year. Dry settle to 23. Riley gets it back from Nylander. Lines it up over to Matthews, and that pass missed. Just 15 seconds left in the penalty to Cassian. And a steal by Evan Bouchard. A clear to Colton Sevier, and here come the Oilers with numbers. Sevier has nerves, finds him. Wrist shot off the side of the net. Flip the outside of the pipe. And Darnell Nurse will back off, melt the remaining power play time, and then bring it back in, trying to catch the Leafs into a change. He'll dump it in. Big bounce off the end boards and grabbed by Kyle Clifford. The Stanley Cup champion squared with the LA Kings. Off the left-hand side, Brett Seedy couldn't get it out. Dry subtle carries back for Edmonton. Twist to CeCe. Over to Keith. He'll one-hand it to Yamamoto. Pressure from Dermott. Nugent Hopkins finds Dreisaitl. Checked by Seedy, shook him off, rolled it in front. How about that? I mean, Brett Seedy's making his Leafs debut. Hasn't played in the league except for two games for two years, and now he's got Dreisaitl to deal with. Dermott wrapped up with Yamamoto and knifed ahead by Wayne Simmons, the veteran. Keith finding Dreisaitl, tried to drag it through the neutral zone, could not. Justin Hall picks it up for Toronto and offside against the Leafs. This period brought to you by James H. Brown and Associates, Alberta's precedent-setting injury lawyers. Get the settlement you deserve. JamesHBrown.com. Well, both teams with an excellent penalty killing, Jack, and a real tight checking game so far. It's Tavares at the last second that gets a piece of the stick of Nurse on that follow-through. He was the third man on that rush. Started shorthanded, gets right up on the play. And a great backtrack by Tavares. Denies him a real clean effort. Barry took it away from Engvall. Here's Turris. Little jump in the early going. Again, hit the bar on his first shift. First shift in three weeks. David Camp absorbs and check from Devin Shore. Backs off. He scored the winner in Toronto's last game on Saturday against Chicago. Bad bounce from behind the net. And Camp was there with a backhander. 
for his fourth of the year. He had one goal in 56 games last year. Punched in by Turris, and that ends up out of play over the short glass. Six and a half gone by here in the first period. We've got no score. Kyle Turris feels like there should be one. To play his old team and his uh, hometown team, that being the Toronto Maple Leafs this evening. It is uh, a team that Hyman certainly was uh, happy to sign with when he was uh, after originally being drafted by Florida got a chance to live out a dream putting the uh, Maple Leaf on and scoring his first goal and I guess it was meant to be uh, look at him as a kid with the Toronto Maple Leaf stick I think that stick and the fact he's not playing tonight left a bad taste in his mouth. <laughs> Andre Kasha with a puck for the Leafs. Lead pass Morgan Riley and let's give Kyle Dubas general manager of the Leafs credit his first move was acquiring Zach Hyman in exchange for Greg McKay. That worked out fairly well. On that one. <laughs> There's no argument there. And give McKay credit, he stayed around the NHL, yep. but he's not Zach Hyman. Michael Bunting walks in, wrist shot off the glove, and Miko Koskin it with a stabbing move of the leather. And Yamamoto able to control. That was a good save. Bunting walked in, had that far corner picked. Here's Kasha, wrist shot, and that was elevated up and out of play. Providing competitive odds on all sports. Sports Interaction is Canada's sports book. Well, Jack, I think it's safe to say that both of these teams have a healthy respect for one another. Very defensive-minded start to this game, and this one here again. Bunting kind of walks in as the defensive Edmonton drop in a little deep, and he tries to pick glove hand high on Miko Koskin and fights that one off. That was kind of a wax off type of save. Yep, just quickly gets it up there. Didn't quite control it, but that was lasered for the top shelf and for Michael Bunting. An opportunity to play on the top line. He's come in after six seasons with the Arizona Coyotes organization. Had 10 goals in 21 games last year and is on the top line now in Toronto. And doing pretty well there. Tavares able to win the face off. A wrist shot by Muzzin to save Koskin and then he'll freeze it as Tavares was buried in front of the Edmonton Nets. Yeah, both teams defending well in front of their respective goaltenders. And another face-off win for the Leafs and a sharp angle shot that bounces right to Kerfoot. He has a little chop at it. You can see Tavares has always had such strength on his stick driving into that blue paint, looking for anything left over and gets manhandled a little bit. Face-off win for Drysaddle. Again, he's done all the heavy lifting against these premier face-off clubs that Edmonton has seen lately. Carolina, Boston, Minnesota. Here's a turnover. Nugent Hopkins finds drive side and he missed an open net. This crowd is stunned. Dry subtle quickly gets it back from Yamamoto. Tries to find Nugent Hopkins broken up. And that's what happens, I suppose, when you've lost five in a row. That's the league's top sniper missing a vacant goal. I'm just going to say, I don't think anybody's more stunned than Leon Dreisaitl after missing that one. What a pass by Nugent Hopkins, though. He was all alone in front of the net. He sold it to everyone that he was going to shoot. Leafs trying to shake off that juicy turnover that resulted in the chance. Cassian moving in. Toronto hemmed in. Cini trying to escape with a backhander up the middle for Clifford, and it's Eventually forked out by Dermott, brought back in by Derek Ryan. Sevier broke free but lost the puck. Regained, shot, and a block by Sevier. Got to break the glove. That one stung a little bit. Ryan will throw it around the boards. Hall, a collision with Derek Ryan, and a backhander up to Wayne Simmons. Shakes off the body check, and the Colonel will bang it in for the Leafs. Koskinen up to Marcus Niemelainen. Credited with a rookie record, 10 hits against Carolina in Edmonton's 3-1 loss on Saturday. The kid's played six games and he's fourth on the Oilers in hits. That goes to tell you how much he's thrown his body around early on and why they love him in the lineup. Here's Riley streaking in, centering pass reflected and corralled by Tyler Benson who draws in as this puck deflected out of play into about the sixth row. 
Best chance of the game so far. Obviously a great A for Leon Dreisel. Doesn't miss many from there in the best of times. With this one here, great sell by Nugent Hopkins. He pounces on that puck, puts it right to Dreisel. And he even stops it. Stops it, makes sure he has it. This is the turnover right here because of the pressure. Muzzin tries to chip that up the boards. It goes right to Nugent Hopkins, right to Dreisel. And he can't believe he missed that one. I think Muzzin kind of mumbled something to Dreisel on the way back. Probably something like, I can't believe that didn't go in. Thanks for missing. Give Yamamoto credit for disrupting and helping create the turnover. Bunting on a backtrack. We'll find it. Dish off to TJ Brody. Leaps up through center. Austin Matthews drops it behind the Edmonton net. Toronto got off to a shaky start this year, then won 15 of 17. Fogel walks in with a shot cut off by the blocker of Jack Campbell, who started red hot. Another. Dead giveaway by Brody, but it got away with it as the Leafs had support. Matthews chipped ahead for Muzzin. Recovered, teed it up, and driven wide by Bunting. He got all of that one. Smacked off the plexi and all the way down. A couple looks for Bunting from that similar spot. He was a little, little more in tight in the last one. That was a little more distance. Engvall looking ahead for Camp. He'll swing it around the boards. Camp a longtime teammate of Duncan Keith when they played together in Chicago. Cassian won a battle off the boards. Here's Sevier. We're going to get his first goal in 32 games. Twisted up with Liljegren. Cassian recovered, trying to tuck it on the far side. Camp on his backhand will flick it up the middle, but it's held in by Keith. Open is CC around Camp. A backhander tipped wide by Ryan. It was right between the hash marks where you want him. Engvall pushes it out to center and chopped in by Dermott. Keith on the recovery. CC for Cassian. More than halfway through this first period. Lobbed in. Settled by Justin Hall. McKeon, Dermott, and Nylander finds Hall activating up through center, but he just lost the handle. The dead giveaway gives it to Bouchard. Drives on over the middle, and it's turned right back over. And brought up ice by Kerfoot. Nylander streaks in, pounds it just wide. Rebound, I believe, climbed up into the netting. And with 8.42 to go in the first, the Oilers at least. No score. Dry settle. Can't believe he missed that one. I'm trying to tie the game against the Hurricanes on Saturday. Tonight, early on, it's Dry Seidel with a great A chance and has maybe a little too much time, as you said, Jack, to look at that one, pick his spot, just misses far side, but never comes easy when you're trying to get off the schneid, trying to get off a losing streak. And for Edmonton, it's not going to be any different. They're going to have to really buckle down and finish off their chances. But that was a great one there. That's like me standing over an 18-inch putt to win five bucks. <laughs> I yeah. get plenty of nervous over those. Shaky. Here's Riley, a shot steered aside by Miko Koskinen. Rebound collected and cleared by Nugent Hopkins and settled by T.J. Brody. He'll spin, reverse pivot, and then threw Yamamoto off balance, allowing Kerfoot to bring it to center untouched. Nayland threw one toward Koskinen, swept in front, and Yamamoto with the interception. Gains the line and fires it around the board, strikes up. Working against Tavares and Kerfoot. Nugent Hopkins too much on it. Brody will angle ahead for Riley, and it's driven back towards center. Batted down by Keith, but now he's got Nylander backing in offside. Hot and fresh pizzas, wings, and all the game day cravings delivered right to your door by Pizza 73. Score a great deal at pizza73.com. Two former Calgary Flames coaches work in the Edmonton bench tonight, Glenn Gullitson, and of course, Jim Playfair, the associate coach. Gullitson also coached the Dallas Stars, as you know, Louie. Yep. Four years as the head coach of the National Hockey League, two with Dallas, two with the Flames. So obviously has that ability to step in there as the head coach with Dave Tippett missing this one. As a precaution, from which we understand, with there being some COVID around the team, and you're Emily. right. You know what? Everybody steps up, and it's next man up, and it's no different than when the players have injuries and a guy has to step up in a situation. As you heard Craig McTavish talk about, well, that's why you have experienced coaches on your staff that can step in and get the job done. That was Jimmy Playfair, left of your screen to Glenn Galtz, and the guy you saw on the right, Brian Wiseman. 
who of course once played for Dave Tippett when they were in the IHL. Won a championship with him. Great player. Saney off to Wayne Simmons. He'll dump it in. Unbelievable hands, Brian Wiseman. Is that correct? He would make you look really bad if he yeah. went fishing for a puck, I can tell you that. <laughs> no. Loves it. That's Over from experience. Lilligren. I was going to say, yeah. that sounds like personal yes. experience. Yes. That was a very good team they had back in Houston. Wow. Muzzin drives it in. Shore shakes off a partial hit from Simmons. And now laid ahead by Neyman Linen, but into traffic. Shore collided with Matthews. Puck pops back to Neyman Linen, and now over to Tyson Berry, who launches down the middle, just out of the reach of McDavid. He'll reel it in. Hall checks in, brushed by Kasha. We go inside, seven minutes to play in the scoreless opening period. Bouchard centers one time wide by Pugliarvi. Now Hall turned it back over to Fogle in front, hovering close by. Connor McDavid chipped off laps, swatted down by Bouchard. Fogle getting a chance to play inside the top six and keeps it alive for Yessa Pugliarvi. Run over by Dermott. Here's Matthews turning it over to Darnell Nurse. Wisely to the far side. Toronto loves playing here. The Leafs are 8-0-1 lifetime at Rogers Place. McDavid beat him in overtime. Here's a backhander and a save on Bunting. And then from his knees, Austin Matthews unable to get a shot toward the net. That for a moment looked like vintage Ovechkin. As he was trying to score while lying prone on the ice. Pooley Irving to McDavid. Shot Nurse. Save made Campbell. And the rebound lifted back through center. I actually called that game, Jack, in Phoenix against the Coyotes. But a couple great chances, and you're right, after a long shift in the offensive zone, the Leafs go to work on the attack, and watch this one, a dive at that puck, but fended off by Koskinen. EP as Connor McDavid. Keep uh, an, an even... Sorry, this guy's just messing me up. Sorry. <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> Well, that's what happens, but I hear the Leafs were trying to sign him because nobody gets Connor off his game uh, except for that fan this morning. Sean May looking sharp in the Merlot sweater at morning skate. Very impressive. Here's Yamamoto kicking it back to Duncan Keith, who you've noticed early, Lou. Yeah, he's made some just real key little plays that, you know, for a veteran defense, when he makes it look easy, but they're not. That one little transitional play in the offensive zone, little switch with CC, CC activated. That was that redirection in front of the net, but just a heads up play, the quickness of Keith to keep that play alive. Well, and remember, they didn't have either for four games. With CC out on the COVID list, Ryan McLeod, by the way, has landed in COVID protocol as well. So he's unavailable to Edmonton tonight. That allowed Turris and Benson to move back into the lineup with the accompanying Hyman injury. Brendan Perlini on his way up from the farm club. Drysaddle gaining the line with Pugliarvi to his right. On his backhand twist, finds an opening for Fogel, a shot. And Campbell thought it had squeaked through him, but he was able to freeze it. Make MIC your choice. A proud partner and the official medical imaging provider to the Edmonton Oilers. It's been a long drought for Warren Fogel. Gets an opportunity up on a higher line tonight with McDavid and Pugliarvi in here. Another good chance right here. And he takes that shot as Pugliarvi presenting the screen in front. Heavy shot by Pugliarvi right off the draw. Campbell able to make the save. Wristed back in front by Fogel. A hack and Campbell again denies. But Warren Fogel telling you, and I've said it on a couple of recent telecasts, I feel like he's around it. Just hasn't had it go in for him. I agree. And he's not alone on the Oiler roster right now. They're without a goal from the bottom six in their last eight games. And most importantly, when you're playing on that line with McDavid, pull your RV alike, shoot that puck. He's not looking for the puck back. When he gives it to you, he wants you to shoot it. Routine save on camp by Miko Koskinen. So shot clock now even. And you know, a lot of the times with, with players, when they get put on a line with the best player in the game, you know, the tendency is to want to overpass it back. But for Warren Fogel, he's played with top players. He played with Sebastian Ajo in Carolina through stretches. And if you look at the highlights that he scored the goals, he knows where to go. Already tonight, he's had a couple opportunities in tight. He's been funneling towards the net. But two big guys on that line with McDavid and Paul Yarvey and Fogel, 
And with the absence of Zach Hyman due to injury, it's an opportunity for him to get up there. A little life in his step, a little drive, and maybe get off that schneid. Goalless in his last 17. He's not scored since October the 30th. Terrace ahead. Devin Shore. Grabbed by Cena. Brings it to center and golfs it in. Team lining after it. And he'll leave it in the corner. Turris beaten to it by Dermott. Cena coughed it up. Turris looked to clear. Dermott held it in off his back foot. Team lining. Clears with no problem. Three and a half to go. Justin Hall, a reset for Toronto. Ryan, Sevier, and Cassian. Matthews up ice. Kasha has been productive since Garner's injury. Fires it in. Koskinen left it for Darner, or excuse me, Duncan Keith. And that was a high stick. shaken up. Flipped in. And that's going to be icing and bunting. Feeling like he was victimized by what Louis DeBrus mentioned, a high stick. No question a stick came up and hit him in the face. The question is, was this a follow through? And He's certainly reaching up in the face area right here. You're going to see Sevier just tries to chip this puck through, but no, it's the stick of Keith that comes up actually trying to lift the stick. Bam, right there. Catches him as he tries to not allow bunting. That's a missed call by the officials. No question about that. Bunting went down. Looks like he's going to be okay. Great work by our crew. What a look at it. Here's CeCe. Cassian. Trying to jam it out, could it? Kasha, beautiful move, left to Nylander, shot, and that was denied by Koskin. What interior pass by Toronto. Let's but the Leafs can't finish. CC to Keith, ahead. Sevier, backhands it around to Cassian. He's got a lot of open ice, rifled it on net, save Campbell, rebound Sevier, take it down, chip back, Keith a shot, and Campbell making a save through traffic. Some good work down low on the fourth line for Edmonton's been physical in this game. They've been chipping pucks in and working off that cycle. And here's that stick handling, and it's Kasha right there, a little walk. Beautiful little pass in tight, as you mentioned, Jack, and then almost finished off by Nealander, who's been an oiler killer throughout his career. Tries to go up over top of the blocker side of Koskin. You can see the follow through by Koskin and raises that up and gets a big chunk of the puck, enough to deflect it up into the glass. What a chance in tight for Nealander. McDavid able to win the face off. A shot blocker to side by Campbell against Darnell Nurse. Pooley back to the point. Wound around by Evan Bouchard, and now you've got Liljegren engaged with McDavid. Simmons able to punch it ahead for Tavares, and now Kerfoot. Bouchard denied the centering pass. Simmons kept it alive momentarily. Went after Bouchard, who shrugged him off and found Darnell Nurse. And the Oilers will pour in. Drop pass for Warren Fogel. He shot bottled up by Liljegren. And the Leafs back through the middle. Kerfoot to Tavares. Toss back behind. McDavid will catch up to it. And with a buck 45 left in the scoreless first, he'll flip it in from the red. Justin Hall. Hope checked by Nugent Hopkins. David in the vicinity. McKayev comes over with support and rolls it over to Hall. He's going to spin off that relentlessness from Nugent Hopkins. Can't do it. Nugent Hopkins just right in his grill. Yamamoto trying to carve it out of there for dry subtle. Engvall joined the fray. Cam put it clear. Rifle toward the net by Keith and a save made on the deflection by Campbell. Keith down low. Drysaddle briefly stapled to the wall. Nugent Hopkins helps him out. All trying to bust up the cycle, but he can't do it. Yamamoto in tight as we go inside a minute. Rolled in front, and finally out to Engball. Hard working shift. Keith with brilliant anticipation. The steal and the dish head for Drysaddle. And he's drawn an interference call against Dermott. That was created by Keith anticipating exactly what you just talked about, Louis. I think it's going to dry settle. It's actually going to dry wow. settle. He reached up and kind of grabbed the helmet. 
Edmonton penalty number Durban. 29, minor penalty yep. for roughing. I thought it was interference, Dermot, Louie. You were all over it. Well, listen, he tried to chip it by him and go to the middle, and for Dermot, he just kind of stayed in the lane, and it was because, Mc... sorry, Drysaddle reaches up and kind of grabs the head of Dermot and pulls it down. That's where the penalty's taken right there. My apologies, Ruffing's folks. Roughing's the call. Louis bang on. Maybe a little frustration yep. creeping in. Morgan Riley shot inadvertently, tipped on that by Nurse, and a save cost. Tomorrow's backdoor score. Austin Matthews finishes it off and stays hot. That's his 12th goal in the last 10 games. 19 on the year, 1 0 Toronto. Tough one to give up late in the period. It's been a pretty solid back and forth affair for both teams. But it's the power play that's been red hot for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They go to work right off the faceoff. And this puck gets deflected onto the net off the stick of Nurse. And as it bounces back, that's a great job by Tavares just to continue to stay with that puck. It almost looks like he's going to fall down right there. But in the process, just kind of shovels it over to Austin Matthews, who's waiting for this puck. Look at him just waiting, waiting. Please get to me. It does. And that quick release beats Koskinen for a 1-0 lead with 34 seconds on the clock left in this first period. Won the Rocket Richard with 41 a year ago and has roared back into contention with the aforementioned heater he's been on over the last month. His 19th from Tavares on the power play. Leafs came in 10 for their last 18 on the man advantage. That's 55%. And they're one for two tonight. Matthews, Kasha, back door, and it was there, but Brody flubbed it. Behind the net, getting worked over by Nurse around the boards, and the clock will run out with Matthews in possession, and Toronto owning a 1 0 lead. Matthews from Tavares at 19 24. Amber and Sam on deck with your Hockey Central panel. 20 minutes complete in Edmonton. The Leafs, a 1-0 lead. It's entertainment, it's fun, it's squad rides. We're putting some skin in the game, bro. And we're just here for this, like, it's an electric crowd here at Rogers Place. And we want to do these ride-alongs all the Come ride with us on the Sportsnet <laughs> Instagram account. Uh, ride with us. What's the reaction been like? Very positive. Yeah. We have so many takes from so many yeah. different people in the building. Our mind, we've been sprinkling all over. We encourage you to do so as well. What a guy, what a guy. Okay, we got to get rid of Cabby. Let's taxi over to Louie and Jack for their ride along. I feel like we haven't brought it enough to this point. Yeah, we, listen to Gabby. Yeah, we, we might need to give ourselves an extra little bit of a jolt. If you want the Steelers in week 18, I'll take the Browns. Here's a drive and a save. Made on Darnell Nurse. Pooley Arby to Nurse. One of the great things about working Louie over in the NFL coverage, I know I, I, I'm going to have the inside tip yeah. advantage. It's a big time inside school. We and Cabby will take you to school. <laughs> Absolutely. As you well know, but it was Austin Matthews that gave his least team the 1 0 <laughs> lead late in that first period. That was a wicked little shot from the blue line there before the offside. It was deflected in front of Campbell. Had to fight that one off. Matthews a power play goal. Kasha and Tavares the assist. And icing whistled against Toronto here in the opening half minute. But you know, there's no question when it is Austin Matthews versus Connor McDavid, always a special night. And last year a little different with the Canadian division. Nine times they played each other, so maybe diluting that a bit. But the excitement is real in the building tonight, and you can feel right from the warm-up a lot of Maple Leaf jerseys in the crowd, Edmonton jerseys, and there's some jostling back and forth. But from the get-go, there's been a buzz at Rogers Place. And for those who missed it, Louis did say nine times. Toronto getting points in the last eight. Muzzin with a steal. The high school principal references never get old to me. I'm sorry, I'm immature. Here's Bouchard, lead pass Fogel. If you don't know what movie I'm talking about, I'm sorry for your luck. Vogel, stripped, brought the other way by Kasha. He'll send it off the corner boards. Koskinen will give it a look. CeCe will discover and bring it out. Nugent Hopkins 
Set up Drysaddle for that open net in the first period. Drysaddle didn't finish, and now the Leafs might have a two-on-one brew. Kerfoot streaking in. Just missed Nylander with a cross seamer. And Yamamoto trying to break it up against Tavares. Worked free to Drysaddle, who absorbs the hit from Kerfoot and leaves it for Yamamoto. That was great back pressure by Yamamoto on Nylander, who can really fly. But Yamamoto's feet moving behind him certainly disrupted him enough. He just couldn't get a handle on that pass across from Kerfoot. But opportunistic the Leafs have been. And this turns into a two-on-one, albeit right at the last second two-on-one. And there's the stick right there by Nylander that disrupts that puck, knocks it into the offensive zone, and Kerfoot just rifles that one through to him a little bit too high. But that one did land just a little bit past him, but you could see Yamamoto was all over him on the way back. Ryan fished the face out, out for Barry, tried to stuff it short side. Angled to the corner by Campbell, and Campbell clear. Kerfoot in front of his own bench, tug it behind the Oiler defense. Retrieved by Tyson Barry. Starts the rush with a feed to Sevier. Has not scored this year, but Mike Fogel has been around at least recently. Here Engvall. Played some good games against Edmonton. Up to McCabe and then back to Engvall. Button hooks, dishes off to Hall. Tried to get around Ryan, left it for McCabe. Engvall, shot, didn't get through. And Ryan with a clear to Cassian. Busts up the center, dumps it in, and will change. Hall gathers. The Leafs with a 19-8-2 record. And yet, Louis, they're also the sixth best team in points percentage in their own conference. Oilers are 16 and 10, not nearly as impressive. That looked like a trip on Clifford that was not called. Wayne Simmons moves in. Back to Clifford, stripped from behind by Devin Shore. Benson off to Bouchard. Oilers reload. Dart down the middle, spilled in by Turris. A lot of games against Toronto, of course, as a longtime member of the Ottawa Senators. Clifford fires a pass over to Simmons, brushed back in by Shore, handled by Campbell, who remember, I mean, terrific numbers last year and this year, but he didn't become a starter until last season. Seven full years in the American League. Some ECHL time as well. Matthews, a disruptive poke check there. Almost snuck one in. Bully Irving. Denied entry by Morgan Riley. Calmly chips down the middle. This may be icing. Through every challenge you face, we help you return and rebuild because that's what it means to build confidence together. Jack Campbell ready for a faceoff to his right. David bearing down Campbell. This gets better as the game moves along. Here's Duncan Keith, the shot off the pads of Campbell. Keith's numbers better against Toronto. Here's a quick shot by Pooley Irby, kicked out by Campbell. And I believe those chants are soup, if I'm not mistaken, from the Toronto partisans here at Rogers Place. Stunning that he'd have that nickname. Quick shot to save on Fogel. And once again, Campbell issues no rebound. A couple great saves, too. And three chances created off of this faceoff for Edmonton. The first one, the shot from the blue line, a right pad saved by Campbell. Here's a great pass for McDavid out to pull Yarby. It gets blocked by Matthews coming through. And then another one, McDavid finds that stick again. And Fogel just kind of funnels himself to the net. Gets a good shot away. Campbell in the right position is able to squeeze the, pad, squeeze the pads together on that one. But three in a row off a one face-off win. You wonder if Jack Campbell turns into a Tim Thomas type, a late bloomer, that Absolutely. all of a sudden picks it up when he's you know, 29, 30 years old. So there's no question he's settled in. You can just tell with his demeanor, the way he's playing the game. He's settled in and he's feeling it. And look at the last two years. As you mentioned, played 22 games last year, had an outstanding performance, 17 wins in those 22. Dry sudden, driving toward the net, trying to go back toward just missing Yamamoto. He was good in their first round series, too. Played to a save percentage of 934, yet outdueled by Carey Price. Nurse 
Nugent Hopkins, Nurse ducks inside. Rich shot save made by Campbell and Bennett. He'll scoop the rebound. Kind of on cue for Jack Campbell, and you're right, they're giving him the soup chant and the Rogers place stands again here after that one. And just some good movement here by Edmonton to, to find this chance again. Toronto right now is really trying to keep things to the outside. That's an aggressive move by Darnell Nurse coming down, going to the forehand, gets the first one away right there. It comes out aggressively. That puck bounces back in, and Campbell snatches it up with the glove. But as you mentioned, following up that season last year, he's played well again this year, and that's just how it starts. Barry is shot, wrist one wide. Game of line. And Cassian down low. Knife back out in front. Hacked by Barry down to Sevier, and now Ryan. Challenged by Brody and Camp. Cassian hovering close by as Edmonton has Toronto hemmed in here. Looking to get the equalizer, five and a quarter into this second period. Matthews, a late power play goal in the first. Toronto's 11th in its last six games. Here's Ryan to Nima Linen. Take the shot, slide step, and then he'll pump it down low for Sevier. An energy draining shift turned in by Edmondson. A lot of chase in Toronto. Shot elevated up top by Ryan. Good tip. But it didn't find its way through, and here's Engvall. Took a hard hit by Nima Linen again. Cassian will bring it the other way. And he's starting to become a favorite of this crowd in Edmonton, Nima Linen. People are waiting for that big hit. That was an excellent shift, though. That line has been real solid for Edmonton in this game. A few times they've hemmed in Toronto, created that great deflection off the shot by Nima Line and Cassian standing right in front. Here's a dart by Keith and an offside. Toronto, well, we told you before the game, we'll have sound, and indeed we do. One nothing leaps. True. I'm going to put pipe in the middle. Hey, on, on, on ozone draws, I'm going to light up wall like that. But I'm just going to go through because they're putting a forward there. Come on, see, sir. No friends over there, eh, bud? Hello, boy, Koski. Yeah, no. Hang in there, Nemo. Getting piped. <laughs> <laughs> No friends over there. I love it. Just a reminder <laughs> to Cody Cece himself kind of, and X Leaf. Yeah, kind of sarcastically saying it for himself as well. Tyson Berry spending a year in Toronto, but always cool to hear what players are saying when they're mic'd up. A lot of conversation on that bench, and you know it's good stuff. You know, that communication is key, I believe. And for Nealander, you can see him directing traffic out there in the face-offs, telling people where to go, and that's just being in the game, being involved, and in a terrific season. What would you say? <laughs> I was a little bit of a cheerleader, I'm not going to lie. I, I used to talk a lot just to keep myself in the game. Sometimes there was a little bit of time between my shifts. Here's a steal by Fogel. Left wing, quick dish, McDavid, beautiful move, and then poke checked off the stick, toe to side by Campbell. And Kasha. Off to Bunning. You see how he used that left skate to kick that out into the high slot and avert danger. Campbell looking sharp. Bunting able to punch it behind Darnell Nurse. Edmonton has not permitted Toronto a shot in this second period, but has nothing to show for. It. Nurse trying to change that to Fogel. And Pugliarvi was trying to rip that on net and lost the handle. Bouchard couldn't squeak it through. Edmonton all seven shots thus far in this second period. But it remains 1-0 Leafs on a power play goal by Austin Matthews. Nylander to Kerfoot in the middle of the ice. Snatched by Liljegren and his shot blocked. And Nugent Hopkins corrals and clears to Drysaddle. Try to give it back to him, broken up. Left for Yamamoto and now Cody Ceci over to Duncan Keith. 20 points in 20 games. What I was going to say is numbers offensively better against the Leafs than any other club. Lilia Grin will leave it for Jake Muzzin. The atmosphere for these games always fantastic. Crowd just roaring. It's continuous. Sometimes both teams at once jockeying for sound position. Terrace. Shore finds Keith. Benson couldn't break free. And Brody for Toronto finds Morgan Riley. Jammed it into the skates of Benson. The quick counter to Kyle Turris. Drop past Benson. Rich shot save made by Campbell. Then 
Robinson bidding for his first in the NHL. Cleared ahead safely by Riley. Barry choked off. A nice play up the wall by Seedy. Clifford in front. Riley a shot. Didn't reach there. Back in a score on the rebound. I think Simmons was the last to touch it. 2-0 Toronto. Glenn Galton and Playfair looking down at the screen right now because Simmons was right in that blue paint when that puck went in the net. So I'm sure they're looking to see whether or not they want a challenge. And this puck up for grabs in the neutral zone. Right after a good chance for Evanson, Benson with a high quality shot in the slot. This puck just bounces through. Watch Simmons go in, it goes off of his skate and he just wraps it around. Just a great hands by him to be able to find this puck off of his skate, goes off the skate of Tyson Berry and then right out in front to Simmons, who's all over Koskinen here, but he never really makes contact. That's just a great job to stay out of the way of the goaltender and wraps it around for a 2-0 lead for the Leafs. And for Simmons, came out his last shift, started to ratchet up that physicality. Looks like something's going on with Koskinen here. Obviously, the equipment. He lost his blade on that sequence trying to push off. So as they attend to Koskinen, Brad Simmons Harrison from Clifford. another blade in there quick. Yeah, Brad Harrison right on it. And Kyle Clifford doing a nice job of dislodging that puck a second time and allowing Simmons to curl. And it's the first good chance for the Leafs in a while. As you mentioned, Jack, early on in this period, it was all Evanson with the first seven shots. And there's the drive in and just get yourself to a good spot for Simmons. He's right on the edge of that blue paint. You always have to be aware where the goaltender is. You touch him in any regard in that blue paint. Don't allow him to make the save. It's going to be challenged. But for Simmons, when you watch that replay, he just dances around the six foot seven Koskin and uses his reach to wrap it home. To gain another lead, a two goal lead for the Leafs. Well, because of the skate blade, Glenn Gullitson and Jim Playfair had plenty of the time to determine whether, in fact, they wanted to challenge. And I don't think they've elected to do so. I think it's the right call. When you look at all those plays, and he didn't he didn't touch Koskinen, which is the most impressive thing. He's, he was able to dance around him and still find a way to find that puck for a second time and bash it home. Well, Wayne Simmons is a big power forward, but he's also, as you know, very agile. It's not as though he's you know, thick in the trunk area or in particular. He's pretty streamlined. And that was really well done. Alex Kerfoot, sign of a guy, I guess, who scored six 20 goal seasons yeah. in his career. Two 30 plus. Here's Drysud hitting Yamamoto. Riley and Clifford with the helpers, and it's 2 0 Toronto. Cody Cece a wrist shot, and that deflects out of play. But for the fifth time in as many games on this homestand, Edmonton finds itself down 2 0. And you know, it's one of those things the team has talked about a lot as of late. And you know, you're gripping that stick, you're trying to fight back, the chances are coming. You saw that great A chance for Drysidle in the first period, he misses the net. And it's just part of trying to get yourself out of a bad beat. And you know, this is a Toronto team that on Saturday had a 4 1 lead in that game versus the Chicago Blackhawks. Chicago would come back to tie it 4 4 and ultimately lose it 5 4. So for Evanson right now, it's about getting that next one. Off the draw, rip tie and wide. Brody getting worked over by Yesapuliar. And then the puck flicked over to Bouchard. They'll jam it down low and eluded Fogel, but Puliarvi is there. David coming down the slot, hoping for a look from Fogel. Angled out to Bouchard. Drag move to the middle. Then to McDavid, a quick shot. A save made by Jack Campbell, no rebound. All dreams start at home. Chase yours in a customized plan by Coventry Homes, the preferred builder of the Edmonton Oilers. This newly formed line for Edmonton has been real solid in this game, creating chances. T.J. Brody gets a high stick right in the face here. This one comes up and clips him. No call on the play. Nice little dance move there by Bouchard. Little backhand dish to McDavid as Fogel and Pulleyarvi were in the front of the net. Fogel was all over Campbell there. Had to dance to try and make, not make contact. Blast by Bouchard off Drysaddle's face off win. Stopped by Campbell and then rolled wide by Nurse. Nugent Hopkins, Yamamoto back to the point, out of the reach of Leon Dreisaitl. will race back to pick it up. We're halfway through this hockey game. 
And Edmonton with just five goals scored in its last four. A bagel through 30 minutes tonight against Jack Campbell, who's looking awfully sharp. 22 saves for the game. And remember, Edmonton has outshot Toronto 10-1 in this period. But that one shot went in. Lilia Grin will get it back from Muzzin. Send it up the boards. Bouchard the steal. Drysaddle kept it on side. Forked it over for Cassie. Stripped by Muzzin. Up the boards, bunting. Couldn't get it out. Ryan draped all over him. And now Sevier with pressure on Muzzin. Cassie and flings it around. Keith chopped one on net. Blocked it away by Campbell. Lilia Grin freed it up for Muzzin. Took the shot from Cassie and Cecil will pinch. Tavares comes over to try to spring it free. It's Ryan to Keith, wide open. Cece a shot, and that stayed out. Climbed off the glass, and Keith had it disrupted by Kasha back to center. Sevier from Cece. Lilia Grin on him, roll it around. McDavid scoots it out, Cece. Drifted down low for Sevier. Trying to go net front. That was broken up. CC maintains. Nylander was able to boot it out of the zone. Recovered by McDavid. Duncan Keith over to Fogel. His shot blocked, and that one might have stung Muzzin. But it was a successful shot block, and Nylander up through the middle. Kerfoot, wrist shot, fought off by Goskin. His first save of the period comes almost 12 minutes deep. Cleared out, Dermott knocks it down. That's a quick little double shift for the McDavid line by Glenn Gullitson to try and get him right back out there. Differential in shots against 9-1 to one with McDavid on the ice in favor of Edmonton. Matthews kept pestering Nugent Hopkins. Keith angled one off the boards, and Pooley Army got it as far as the Toronto line. Banged off the boards, team aligned. Freed it up for Nugent Hopkins. He'll back off. Send it up the wall. Simmons knocked it down at center. Shore will kick it back. And Keith ahead for Shore one more time. Mentioned Edmonton without McLeod and Hyman, and that's an offensive zone penalty taken by Devin Shore. And the Leafs will go to the power play already armed with a 2 0 lead. Wayne Simmons on Toronto's first shot of the period puts the Leafs up a deuce. Nothing 200 feet from your net. He just kind of digs in a little too deep on Hall, takes him down, and then a power play that's been absolutely deadly as of late goes back to work for the Leafs. Tavares against Dry Settle. Toronto one for two tonight and 11 for its last 20. Riley, one timer, Matthews square to the shooter, and Koskinen has that one in his hip pocket. Good save right off the face-off play for Miko Koskinen. And that puck was up for grabs again. Just a good stick and drive to dig it out of there. That's a set play back to the blue line, right to Matthews, and he one-times it. Gets a good one away. Tavares wins the face-off from Drysaddle. Out there with Nugent Hopkins, Bouchard, and Nurse. Toronto kept on the perimeter. Matthews, Tavares, and Riley. Tavares. In front, missed Matthews. Nylander with Kasha, the net front presence. Flip back to Riley. Nylander. Tavares centering past Matthews, a quick shot, and that was kicked aside by Koskinen. Nylander's career high, 31 goals. Scored 22 other times. Tavares to Matthews in front, and that was healed wide by Kasha. What a good look. Here's Riley. Matthews steps in, side of the net, in front to Kasha, broken up, clear Nugent Hopkins. Great puck movement by the Leafs on that play, and Austin Matthews just moving into different lanes to be an option at all times. What a beautiful pass to Kasha. And just fans on that one time. McKayev to Simmons, Sheldon Keith wastes no time in getting a second unit out. Engvall, Muzzin, and Bunting round out the Toronto Five. Keith, Sevier, Ryan, and CeCe out for Edmonton. Bunting, Muzzin, Engvall a shot. That was blocked, and here comes Derek Ryan. Colton Sevier breaks out. 
Right wing. Couldn't pull the trigger. Now centered off the pads of Campbell. And here comes Toronto the other way. Michael Bunning lost that puck at his feet. Regained to Simmons. McKayev to Muzzin. Creating a lane. A shot that's stopped by Koskinen. And the rebound hack free to Sevier. He'll clear the full 200. And that will do it for the Toronto power play. A kill Edmonton had to have. Absolutely needed to have that kill, and it was a good kill. Couple good chances against the one great A by Kashi, just fanned on, but otherwise, a good job to keep it to the outside. And Sevier with some nice work to drive that puck down the ice on that last two on O that it looked like. Brody a slap shot, redirected home. Three nothing. Tough one to give up after a good penalty kill, but the shot by Brody. Obviously redirected. I'm not sure what it goes off in front, but it finds its way past Koskinen. Right after a power play, still in the offensive zone, just a, a textbook play. A puck behind the net. Camp gets it back to the blue line, D to D. And for Brody, he wastes little time to get this one to the net. It might have gone off of McDavid in the high slot initially. But all you're trying to do is just get that through right there. You can see it goes off the stick of McDavid. And for Koskinen, he's down. Because this puck looks like it's going to be a low shot. It elevates and just beats him on the glove hand side. 3 0 Leafs. TJ Brody's 50th career goal. They got him the puck, and that's his first goal in 46 games. Makes it 3 0. Here's Fogel trying to change the complexion. A backhander lifted over top by Pugliarvi. That goal came with McDavid and Drysaddle out there with Devin Shore, who just hopped out of the box. David Camp. Gets the line for Toronto, a backhander easily fed along by Miko Koskinen being backed up by Stuart Skinner tonight. Reports suggest oh, Mike Smith oh, may be as ready as soon as Edmonton's homestand finale against Columbus on Thursday. Louie and I will have that one for you at 7. Mountain Town. Tavares walks in, drop pass. Nylander is shot, cut off by Koskinen. Collected by Kerfoot. Hall to Dermott. Well, the way Campbell's playing, you've got to keep it at three here if you're Edmonton. And Koskinen will stretch out and pull it to his chest with 4.06 on the clock. T.J. Brody giving Toronto much needed separation. Matt Rogers. Well, the Edmonton Oilers power play only two power play, two games of the power play goal in their last seven. Five on five, even strength goals become that much more important. These are the three goals they have scored in the last six games, only three. Even strength. Paul Yarby's been involved in two of them. That was a beautiful pass on Saturday to Nugent Hopkins, who scored that one. But certainly an area, Jack, that Edmonton needs to get better at. They need more production down the lineup, and they need to find a way to score more even strength goals in games. Well, it's worth repeating. Again, no bottom six forward with a goal in the last eight games, dating back to McLeod's goal in Dallas. Here's Dry subtle running one intended for Nugent Hopkins. That was flicked aside by Campbell, and Tavares looks for more. Dishes off, and Muzzin could not handle that puck cleanly. He's tripped up by Yamamoto. No penalty called, dislodged by Tavares. Nyland trying to win the battle in the corner. Edmonton finds itself down 3 0. Muzzin waits at Brody open. Then floated one behind. CC up to Yamamoto, and it's routinely cleared out to Dreisaitl. Knocked off his stick blade, nudged free by Bunting, and now Riley carries in. Kasha tried to put it back in front. Brushed away by Dreisaitl, chopped down Yamamoto. No penalty was called there either. So one each side, and now Dreisaitl regains possession, but he's at the end of his shift, so he'll just toss to the goal line. And Riley with a reset for Toronto. Inside of three minutes to play in this second period. And the way Campbell's playing, Edmonton, in my estimation, has to get one here in the latter stages of period two. Matthews with a dumper. Nurse to track it down. Talking about a guy with a sub 2.0 goals against coming in. See been playing as well recently. He certainly looked sharp tonight. Stopping all 24 he's faced. McKayev stumbling his haul. Manages to direct a pass to Engvall. He'll lift it in from center. First to Gavin. 
Bowling Ball trying to ride him off the puck for McKayev and does. Barry gets into the fight. Broke it up. Camp tried to go down low a second time. Barry under duress. McKayev looking to take it away. And McDavid knocks him off the puck. Advance through to Cassian. Fogel taken down. That's a penalty. Justin Hall for interference. Well, as you mentioned, an opportunity here for Evanson. Just an interference call on Hall as Warren Fogel keeps his feet moving here. Just a little chip to space. And Fogel gets bumped into Dark here for Cassie and just kind of throws it off the wall. No puck there to be had. And pretty soft on Fogel there, but because he's moving his feet, that stick gets in there, takes him down. And a power play for Edmonton, an opportunity to cut the lead to two. And I agree with you, late in this second period, this is a must capitalize situation for them to at least put a little shadow of doubt in the Leafs going into the dressing room into the third period. And again, Toronto's penalty kill has been leaky coming in. Dreisler tied up off the draw puck, sitting in the circle. Camp scrambling after it. Shattered stick on the ice. Kasha fell down on his way to the bench. Sent in front, no one there. Dreisler will stop by Campbell. Might have clipped the side of the net. And a clear by Muzzin. Kasha fell down as he was trying to get a new stick, and that created a wide open Leon Dreisaitl, and Campbell was able to stare him down. I think he put it off the side of the net, potentially. He got that shot away. That puck was up on edge for Dreisaitl. Had some time. It's the way it's been going. Nugent Hopkins, McDavid inside. Pugliarvi a shot to save. Campbell rebound kept in by Barry. Here's McDavid. Dreisaitl. Coming off the goal line with a minute to go. Nugent Hopkins, Barry, shot, save, Campbell, rebound, slugged down the ice by Kirby. 14 second differential between the penalty clock and the game clock. Nugent Hopkins to Pooley Army, it's rammed in. Campbell couldn't get a stick on it. Cassian first on the puck. With Pooley Army, Nugent Hopkins, Nurse, and McDavid. Dreisaitl's off here. Toronto bodying up. Riley trying to chisel it free. Nurse will walk the line. Nugent Hopkins tried to give it back to him, taken away by Kasha. And he'll hit the Edmonton line, sends it down low. I always think Andre Kasha looks like he's playing with a stick. Four sizes too small, but now he makes a steal. Hovers tried to shot that hit his own man, Engvall. Five seconds, Nurse ahead for Nugent Hopkins, bounced over his stick, and the period subsides without further incident. And Toronto will take a 3-0 lead into the dressing room, and they're 15-0 this year when leading after 40. A couple good chances created in the power play. Leon Dreisaitl with the best one. This puck just bounces to him. You're right, Kasha was going to the bench to get a new stick. Kim's back, and maybe a piece of it by Campbell off the side of the net, and then pull your RV shot. Doesn't cleanly get through there as well. Lilligren with a piece of it into the pad of Campbell and then cleared by Kerfoot down the ice. Good chances, but they can't solve Jack Campbell in this one so far. So in a period where Edmonton outshoots Toronto 15 to seven, the Leafs get the only two goals. David Amber and Sam Cosentino waiting patiently on the other side. And you saw what happened with the Leafs. They had two goals in that second period on seven shots. They were opportunistic. And this is the only way you're going to drive yourself out of a situation like this for the Edmonton Oilers is to continue to attack, continue to play that hard game, and just will one to go in. Because if you get one, you never know. The floodgates might open, great, plant that seed of doubt. And we've seen this Oiler team score in bunches when they're hot. It's been a hard grind as of late. They need to try and get back on track in that regard. 16 seconds of power play time to start the third, and here's Drysaddle finding McDavid. He moves in, poke check from behind. He'll recover and then dish out to Nurse, who has five shots tonight. Pounded on that by Bouchard. Save Campbell. It's loose and ends up trickling back behind for Camp, and the power play is over for the Edmonton Oilers. 0 for 2 tonight and just 3 for their last 25. Should be noted, Toronto did cough up a three-goal lead on Saturday, but then got the friendly bounce that Camp backhanded home to beat Chicago after a 4-1 lead turned into a 4-4 tie with 90 seconds to go. Muzzin backing off here. Leafs hoping to learn from that experience. 
told you they've been still winning, but a little leakier here in December. They gave up 20 goals in 14 games in November, 25 in the first six in December. Three, two, and one, though, in those six games. Kasha will send it in. Tell you, that's what Evanson will be preaching, especially between that second and third period. Here's a quick dish by Bunting, but right into the skates of Kasha. That appeared to be there. Kasha's had a couple of good looks tonight. Hasn't converted. Vogel had it brushed off his stick. Here's Matthews ahead. Snuck it to Kasha, and again, he's able to pull it around. Cost it. It felt like he took a goalie stick right in his chest. Yamamoto will dump it behind the Toronto defense and eventually reel it in. Leave it for Fogel in front. Reach shot denied on the doorstep. Derek Ryan stopped by Jack Campbell. A brilliant save. Keith unable to smack one on that. That was blocked inadvertently by Matthews and carried to an open space by Pierre Engball as he waits for his team to change. Dermott to Riley and a Toronto reset. One touch by Camp, backhanded in by Cassie. Campbell's been very good tonight. He's been excellent. He's the difference right now. 29 saves. And that one from six feet against Derek Ryan, who has just one goal all year. Devin Shore just one. Vogel we talked about. Hasn't scored since October 30th. Even guess a Pugliarvi, Louis. Just two in his last 15. Dry subtle hitting the line. Wrist shot handled by Campbell. Save number 30. Pugliarvi knocked off the puck. Kyle Clifford bottled up. McDavid pulled it free. Name a line and a shot into the glove of Campbell. He's unconscious right now. And you have to continue to throw pucks at him with bodies in front. Here's a little breakdown for Evanton. The defense is, oh, nice little pickoff right there by Austin Matthews. Puts it to Bunting. He tries to put that over to Kasha, and then right after that, another turnover. Kasha in all alone. Just can't finish it off. Here's the great chance by Ryan in front as Campbell stares him down. And another hard release by Nima Linen. Glove hand saved by Campbell. But Evanton's come out in this third period. They can't turn pucks over like they did early on that sequence with two chances against but continue to get pucks on Campbell with traffic in front, try and get on that board and break that goose egg. Muzzin and Nylander. Campbell with three shutouts this year, tied for second in the league. Nugent Hopkins up to Darnell Nurse, dangling his way in. Couldn't squeeze past Muzzin. And you've got Liljegren looking to clear. Chopped back in by Nugent Hopkins. And Edmonton another try. Tavares against Yamamoto. The Leafs won the season series handily last year, including a three-game sweep in this building by a combined 13 to one, where Toronto played as close to perfect regular season hockey as you can imagine. That was just an absolute display coming in those three games in succession here at Rogers Place. Just and completely so. outplayed Edmonton. You're right, Jack, it was kind of a real tone setting sequence for right. the rest of that season that listen the game's got to elevate no question about that in the Canadian division that was a beating but that's not what transpired tonight tonight it's yep. been Campbell has just been brilliant and Edmonton looks like a snake bit club right now Kasha walks in flipped it over the net Riley TJ Brody backing off Riley a shot Kicked out into the high slot, grabbed by Kasha, bunting, belted by Benson. Buck carried off the back of the net, Turris unable to get it out. Eventually rolled free for CeCe, and he'll carry it out swiftly for Edmonton. Stripped from behind, Brody works it ahead for bunting, one on two. Couldn't beat either Bouchard or Pouillard, he left it for Cini. Dermott to Cam. Now Brett Sini. McKayev jumps into an open space. Sini had it and lost it. Camp snatched it right back. Drysaddle and McDavid with the pressure. Steve Tippett's Hockey Club trying to break this five-game losing streak. Quick shot, Sini, and a save made by Miko Koskinen.
the new Sports Select. Now with single game bets and more ways to play at SportsSelect.com. Police continuing to push for more. Jack and Kasha with a good chance trying to go wide almost a breakaway. He gets denied. This is a great chance for Sini. Who lets that one go from the high slot. Just a battle one down below. Puck gets jabbed to him. Mikheyev puts that right to Sini. He gets a good shot away. That's a great glove hand save. Just winning the battle. Scored five times for Jersey in 18-19. Here's Sevier dropping it off for Cassian off the run. Couldn't pull the trigger and then a goal. Finally, the Oilers off the schneid and Colton Sevier has picked up his first goal of the season and his first in 32 games going back to last year. 3-1 in Edmonton has life. His first is an Oiler. I'll tell you, this is a big goal, Jack. And it's a depth goal, and it's an even strength goal, and it wasn't pretty. I'll tell you what, they had to jam away at this one, but follow the bouncing puck right from out of the zone. One bounce, chip to the middle, mishap right there. Again, backhand off the skate right to Sevier, and that's kind of the night that it's been. There's a bounce, and that's what you have to play off of. This goes off the skate of Muzzin, right to Sevier, who's had a real strong game. My opinion tonight for Edmonton, he's been all over the puck in the offensive zone, had a couple chances himself, and finally, they saw Jack Campbell. It wasn't pretty, but they don't care. And they're on the board. It's a two-goal game. Last goal came April the 11th with the Pittsburgh Penguins from Cassian at 526. And that's the first goal scored by a bottom six board for the Edmonton Oilers in nine games. And that'll give the bench a big lift. On Still work points, to be done. Right. Two points because it's Sevier getting his first goal as an Oiler, which is huge. And also they finally saw Jack Campbell in a night where they've got 32 shots on net. He saved 31 of them. But they finally cracked him. And now an opportunity with a lot of time on the clock to make a push. There's Barry dishing off to Cassian. Back to the point shot. Nurse doesn't make it through. And it might have taken a bounce like that to beat Jack Campbell tonight. But now that you've beat him, you put a puck behind him, and Toronto, I'm sure, remembers Saturday well, where a three-goal lead evaporated. Bailed out by that bounce. Barry will snap it in off the end boards. Dry subtle, could not control. And now Nylander with McDavid trailing. Play ruled onside. It's Nylander on his backhand. Centers Riley, a quick shot, scores. And Toronto back in front, 4-1. Boy, what a shot by Morgan Riley. He absolutely ripped that one. No wind up whatsoever. Right sided one timer. Great backtracking by McDavid and just not enough done on this entry into the zone. When you've got someone backtracking that aggressively, you can keep your gap a little bit better. Look how far back the defense of the Oilers already are. And as a result, entry into the zone still has possession. And for Nealander, I think he was looking for Tavares here, trying to put that right on his tape. Goes right by him as a decoy. He might challenge this one, but I don't think so. I think that's onside as Kerfoot's heel was still on the blue paint. You heard me hesitate, didn't you? I yep. was. I thought it was close. But give Riley credit. He unleashed that one in a hurry, bar down, to extend the lead to three once again. Close, but nevertheless onside. And a good job in remaining onside. And Morgan Riley continues his sensational season. Slapped in by McKayev. Riley with two more points tonight. Now fifth among the league's defensemen with 26 on the year. McKayev had it smacked down by CeCe. Fourth goal from Nylander. CeCe leaves it for Duncan Keith. Yamamoto unable to extract. Keith on his backhand will find Fogel. Dislodged by Dermott. And that goal seems to have sapped some of the Edmonton-based energy out of this building. Oilers looking to reset. As McDavid sends it in. A lot of time still remaining. Dry settle a steal. A centering pass. Nurse fires. And that shot was blocked. And here comes Toronto. Soccered ahead by Simmons to Cini. 
and then dumped in. Clifford takes Nurse against the boards. Bouillerby pancakes his man and breaking free Bouchard. Drysaddle on his backhand, swallowed up by Kasha, who read the play. Former 20 goal scorer in Anaheim, plagued by injuries in Boston. Here's McDavid to Bouchard, back to McDavid, and it slid off his stick. Bouchard a shot, blocked by Muzzin. And he'll hoist this behind the Edmonton defense, put too much on it, and it's icing. Snow problem? No problem. Head to Martin Deer Line, your local John Deere experts. Colton Sevier's first goal of the season is also the first goal of the game for the Edmonton Oilers, and as a result, Savon Foots has given away their first prize, Sevier from Cassian. The only combo to beat Jack Campbell tonight. Name a line to Turris trying to change that quick shot short side and a save on Devin Shore. Barry backing off. Winding it around the board, Shore on his backhand. Name a line it. Turris. Cross ice pass. And out of Barry's reach, he'll have to fall back. Quick response by Toronto, just a minute seven after Edmonton had breathed life into its own game with a goal by Sevier. Riley looking to extinguish that spark. Has made it a three goal game again as Bunting dumps it in. Turris, as far as the Toronto line, Brody safely across. Nylander reloading for Toronto. He always seems to make a brilliant play head to head against Edmonton, and that's set up for Riley. That's a great shot, as you call, but still, Nylander. Beautiful he made the play. Right from the defensive zone, he was getting tracked down by McDavid. He just kept his feet moving again. I think more could have been done on the entry, but give him credit for holding on to that puck and finding that seam. I do believe he was going for Tavares, but that's what, have, what happens when you have waves coming up the ice. Riley made no mistake with that shot. Shoveled up by Cassian, sent away from Seaver. Wonder whether we'll be hearing that combo on Mike up a little bit later on. Sportsnet producers doing a great job of getting some guys mic'd up for tonight, adding even more life to what has been an ignited building. Steal by Camp and a shot blistered wide. Off the dashers, Camp can't catch up to it. Thrown back in by Dermott. Toronto will do that all night for the next 20 minutes of real time. 9.40 of game time. Camp the steal. Walks in against Barry on his backhand. Tried to tuck it short side. Koskinen did not control. Engvall ridden off the puck by Nurse. And now Yamamoto with a breakout. Disrupted by McCabe. This is what we've seen out of this guy the last two years. He is tough on the forecheck. Usually winds up with a partial break or two. He looks at the worst wear after missing every game. This is his first game of the season, McCabe, after suffering an injury in exhibition. Full goal. Quick setup for Keith, excuse me, partner, and a shot block. Twisted back to center, and McDavid will allow CC to reset. McDavid back in control, skated right by Austin Matthews. Toronto trying to go 9 0 and 1 in this building. Nasha with a clear. And overall, I mean, the Leafs have dominated this series, winning 25 of the last 33. Going back a while. Here's Keith. Dreisaitl, unable to get around Matthews, chipped out. Back to center. CC tried to find Pooley Yarby. Kyle Clifford in the mix. Grappling for puck possession. McDavid, but from Toronto's viewpoint, Louis, this is wasting McDavid's time. And now finally an offside called against Toronto. Eight and change remaining. Colton Sevier has put Edmonton on the board, but the Oilers work to be done. I might take her down the wall again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. Skate, 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 skate. Oh, that's why he just wanted me to stay there. That's what he's talking about. Well. We'll go back in up from there. Thank you, Kirk. We're really going back here. Oh, that's 50 tucks, eh? 
That's awesome. I just love that. Great job tonight. Barry and Nylander. And their expressions tell the story. Toronto 4, Edmonton 1. Eight minutes to play. Duncan Keith, the outlet. Ryan Nugent-Hopkins. Clubbed in by Sevier. Nugent-Hopkins centering Sevier and Fogel right now. CeCe looking on court. And misses the short side. Rebound, Fogel! And Dan will flash the right skate out there. CC gets it back from Duncan Keith. Looks for a lane and a shot just misses by an eyeliner. Here's Sevier inside. Broken up by Tavares. Keith out of the range of Sevier. And now Fogel. Toronto's prior. Oh, here's a steal by Nugent Hopkins. Trying to get around Jake Muzzle. Looked like the Leafs would get it out. Finally, Tavares will make sure of it. Nylander carries to center and wisely flips it in, allowing the Leafs to make a change. But this is an interesting trip, of course. Toronto originally scheduled to play Calgary on Saturday. Now the Leafs in a bit of limbo. Dry settle in over the line. McDavid to pull Yervi. That was fumbled away. We'll look back that. behind the net. Nurse. Worked free by Dry settle out to Bouchard. Nurse, wrist shot. Hit his own man. Leafs trying to muscle it out. Pooley Army staying with it. Dry sidle center, no one home. Bouchard tried to give it back to McDavid, taken away by Bunting. And Kasha drills it in. Matthews engaged with McDavid. Floated toward the other net by Dermott. Blocker to the corner by Koskin and now Matthews looking for Bunny. Nurse came over. Dreisel couldn't thread it out initially. And now he'll come off with McDavid as Bouchard regains for Edmonton. Angled pass off the boards to Ryan. Hit Dreisel on his way off. Toronto brings it back in. Clifford to Wayne Simmons. Bothered by Ryan. Dermott shot deflected high in the air by Shore. Clifford out reach for the puck by Ryan. Rolled the hall, gave it right back. Derek Ryan charges in, cuts, and a wrist shot disappears into the leather of Jack Campbell. Five and a half to go in the third. Toronto trying to close it out. 4-1 from Rogers' place. Benson on Timothy Lilligren. Nice clean finish here as he finds his way on the four check crunch. And <laughs> Lilligren takes a look to see who that was. A little bit spinning into that place, which does catch him in the numbers a bit, but for Tyler Benson, once again, providing that physicality on the fourth line. Pretty sure he knows whether that's salted or sugared plexi. <laughs> that was flavor taste up close. Barry backing off. Bully Irby rifles to Dreisaitl, and he'll shovel it in. Toronto seemingly with this game well in hand. Edmonton looking for a dramatic sequence that would alter the complexion. Cleared by Nylander down the ice, Kerfoot. Tied up with Tyson Berry. It's pinned on the half wall as Edmonton staring at the gaping maw of a six game losing streak which would match the one they endured in December of 18 which also came with the first one on the road, the last five at home. Engball a shot, whistled into the pads of Koskinen. He'll keep it moving. Sevier punches through the nurse, fired in. Vogel, as Campbell directs traffic, Riley to camp, could not get it past Nugent Hopkins. The other side attempted for Brody. He has nowhere to move it. Riley the hard rim, Engvall the play off the wall back to center. Camp sneaks through Cassian. Poke check from behind by Keith. Staying with it, Camp. Sent out to Dermot. And now Kasha. D to D Hall. Kasha rattled it around to McKayev. 
Toronto just draining clock right now. With a 4-1 lead, you can do it. Matthews kept to the outside by Keith. Takashi on his backhand. And with nowhere to really move it, he'll just spin it off the glass and force CC an outlet to Zach Cassian. And as the night moves along, Toronto's fans getting rowdier inside Rogers' place. Jay Wright and Hopkins has it knocked down by Kasha. Wired home by Austin Matthews, his second of the night. And that's an even 20 for Austin Matthews this season. 5-1. I was just, just going to say they're content with keeping that puck in deep, cycling it down low, not even taking the puck to the net, and then eventually it's just a turnover here. Looks like the puck's going to go out of the zone right there. Bounces over the stick ashore, kept alive at the blue line, and Austin Matthews from between the hash marks. One of the most wicked wristers in the game, a tremendous release. Just catches Koskinen, blocker side, mid-height, just above mid-height, to give his team a 5-1 lead. That was a zipper. He has scored in seven of his last eight games against Edmonton. And Louis, he's got 13 and 10. Remember, you and I were hearing from afar, of course, how Matthews was slumping. <laughs> that seems to be over. Here's Simmons inside to Tavares. Lee's up 5 1. Matthews from Kasha. Tavares stick handling across to Muzzin. The shot went off the shin pad of Yamamoto. Fired down by Benson. That'll be an icing call. Gene Principe. Hey, uh, Jack, play the largest game day 50 50. When you buy your Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation 50 50 ticket, you definitely help make oil country a better place. The pot currently climbing $441,535. Buy now at EdmontonOilers.com. A look at the dejected Edmonton Oilers. Who will see their lows, losing streak grow to six. They've got Columbus in here Thursday at seven. We'll have it for you on Sportsnet. And a face off coming to Miko Koskin is left, and there is a possibility, Louis, that Mike Smith could be ready for that game against the Jackets. Yeah, he's looking like he's getting ready to step in between the pipes. Missed a lot of time, but is skating and looks like he's almost ready to go. Fired high and wide by Engvall off the glass, corralled by Riley. And the Toronto Partisans still in the building will enjoy the final two and a half minutes as a bit of a mini celebration for the Leafs about to claim their 20th victory of the season. Brody and Riley biding their time as Edmonton finishes off a line change. Riley pursued by Cassian sends it in from center. Popped over the stick of Miko Koskinen. We will see his lifetime record against Toronto slide to two and seven. Cassian to Darnell Nurse. Backhander caught by Jack Campbell through a screen. Some cheering for Jack Campbell. That little backhand. Saucer into the glove hand of Jack Campbell. Still had to be aware of that, though. The flyby by Derek Ryan. He was right there. Sometimes you can lose that in the traffic, but not tonight. Jack Campbell, only one that's gotten by him off of a puck that goes off the skate of Cassian. Backdoor to Sevier. He buries it. Other than that, a BB getting by him. He wasn't going to let his old teammate get that one through. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't think so. Back in their Sault Ste. Marie days. As Leon drives up. Wrist shot on net. Save Campbell. Juggled momentarily, and then he'll put it to rest with a buck 26 left. Well done. From a lack of trying, but obviously a frustrating time for Oilers fans here watching their team about to lose their sixth straight this season as a jersey gets flopped onto the ice. I think it's something new. <laughs> Seriously. Well, and also, I mean, that's why you start 16 and 5. Here's Kasha breaking in. Tried to center on that one. Went through Michael Bunnett. I mean, the team's record is 16 and 11 at night's end. And there are some Oilers fans who would have taken that through the first 27 games of this upcoming year. 
It's not a dreadful record. Shot wired wide by Matthews looking for the hat. That's how it's turned now. That's, I understand, you know, the frustration because of the way the season started, how sure. it's gone now. Oh, but yeah. just like it's gone south, it can go right back north. It just needs to start get going that way. That's why they call this a marathon. It's not a cliche. Well, maybe it is by now, but yeah. there's a reason it's employed. Over an 82-game stretch, Sorry, you're going to have some adversity, and if you don't, Louie, look what happened to Tampa about four years ago when they won 60-plus. Yeah. Pretty quickly by the Columbus Blue Jackets. You know, look at this tonight, though. This game, there's a lot of good things, too, you look at, and I know that, you know, everybody to a man has said, listen, moral victories right now don't mean anything for us. We need results. We need to produce, and it just isn't happening for them, but there's some good things tonight. Benson and Turris, a two-on-one. The return pass broken up. Toronto, good recovery. Now Kyler Yamamoto, frustrating time for him. Hit a crossbar, but otherwise he's been quiet during this losing streak. Barry pressured by McKayev. Edmonton determined to close in victorious fashion. Turris walks in, Benson centered, sifted back to Yamamoto. The Toronto partisans rise and let their presence be felt. The Leafs. Win it going away 5 1. Jack Campbell, a 35 save night, and Austin Matthews, two goals to stay hot. He's got 13 in his last 10, and the Leafs improve to 28 and 2, while Edmonton has dropped six in a row. The Oilers fall to 16 and 11. Louis DeBrusque will have a final word when we return. This is Rogers Oilers Hockey on Sportsnet.